point snobs check out this view it's gorgeous isn't it enjoying the sunset over here at Najar vineyards just got done walking the uh, Syrah vineyards um, Muscat and uh, Grenache as well but um, I'm sitting down to enjoy the sunset with a glass of uh, the black beast <laughs> it's quite fitting especially uh, considering these vines here grapes are really intense it's a uh, it's on a slope and of course you have those uh, that Sierra quintessential Sierra foothill granite soil um, lots of drainage um, lots of intensity very small tight bunches uh, tight clusters um, intense flavor very lots of acidity thick leathery skin on the uh, um, berries um, I think uh, this is gonna be a good vintage um, but yeah we're having a black beast uh, we're gonna take a look at it um, it's a red blend but I'm sure these uh, Syrah grapes play no small part <laughs> um, but uh, yeah let's take a look mm, lots of intense plum on the nose there I'm not surprised um, especially after tasting the grapes we're probably about a few weeks away from harvest but they're already showing really good intensity um, I would even venture to say you could pick them now and just lay them down for a really long time but I think they could definitely benefit from some hang time a little more, um, develop a little more of those sugars um, and that, you know, a little better fruit expression. Mm. You get a lot of that wet granite, wet slate mineral granite um, essence, kind of like a hot summer day and you had like a flash um rainstorm thunderstorm but the but the rocks are still steaming hot and so you get those vapors of that moist steam coming out coming off the rocks and they carry that mineral rocky essence you get a lot of that here this is not the first wine uh from this vineyard that i've picked that up on um and uh it's definitely very signature of this vineyard um, you get that a lot. Um, I can't remember which one it was, uh, but it really had that particular uh, flavor profile was very intense in it. Um, I'll have to look that up. But yeah, mm. what I like about uh, this region as a whole is the way that granite express expresses itself. Um, there's also that key, that signature um, star anise which you find pretty much all up and down um, the Sierra foothills with varying intensity um, over here it's not as intense um, as say Amador uh, and Fairplay it's really intense there here it's maybe secondary or tertiary and you get a lot more of that rocky dusty granite slate type of expression um, one thing I like about this vineyard is they grow good grapes and um, I'm sure you've heard before <laughs> every good wine starts with good grapes uh, so um, that's half the that's half the battle um, and I can tell that when I taste the wine and I can taste the it has a, a good a well prominent well defined sense of of place um, a wine that is characteristic of the region from which it comes um, and even so, in some cases uh, goes even beyond that the characteristic of the vineyard um, from which it comes the grapes were grown um, and for me that's the measure of a good wine uh, to quote uh, one of my favorite winemakers, Rusty, you know, you just make sure you have good grapes. And if you have good grapes, you harvest them, you leave them alone, 
and you'll make good wine. Just don't screw it up. <laughs> Cheers to you, Rusty. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a little bit of caramel there on the back. Um, nice wood essence. Um, you know, primary notes on here are plum, which is typical for, for Syrah. Those blackberries, um, barely any dark cherry in there. Um, this is a very bold, aggressive Syrah, to be honest, um, in here. There's probably a couple other blend, a couple other varietals blended in here as well. Um, but you definitely get a lot of that signature um, Syrah, Petite Syrah type of expression. Damp wood is all over. It's actually fairly restrained for as big as it is. Mm. Lots of massive structure right up front. Big, big, heavy, thick tannins. <laughs> it's no surprise. I mean, look at that color. Um, this will stain anything. I have to watch out and make sure I don't spill it on my pants here. Um, but right off the bat, it's tart, dry, plum, plum skins, and dark, maybe slightly unripe cherries black cherries just intense blackberries a bit of that um a bit of that uh, dusty uh granite does come through but it's towards the back um you can barely notice it because of the huge thick monolithic slab of structure that <laughs> the tannins lend to the wine um, there's also a heat so uh, those tannins hit you first um, the attack is all tannic intensity um, a big bold structure followed by moderate acidity um, that doesn't even stand a chance. In most other wines, this level of acidity would actually, you know, um, probably take, you know, front stage, front center, but um, in this case, it doesn't stand a chance with these tannins. This is intense. Um, a wine like this should be laid down for a long time. Um, it needs to just integrate and find its happy place. Um, at least a decade, maybe 15 or more years. As the dark berries and plums subside, um, transition to finish, you get a little bit of a fine grain kind of essence um, with the tannins and the granite. And uh, yeah, after that, the palate, it just leaves the palate bone dry. bone dry with a little spice heat pretty much kind of lingers through the body till the finish um, but it actually holds on pretty good it has a long fine-grained um, grip on it um, but it holds up pretty good actually I'm impressed a wine like this you probably want to decant you know, at least maybe 30 minutes, an hour. Just let it breathe. Um, it will also allow some of those tannins to smooth out a little bit, you know, and um, I'm guessing it would probably lend a little bit of a caramel essence to it as they, as uh, it, it further oxidizes. You could probably get a little bit of that, those sugars in there. But all around, a very nice, intense, dry, bold, structured wine. 
this reminds me of um, a big Barolo or a Nibiolo from Lange. Just firm, solid wine. This is a brick house. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, it's a great blend. And uh, I think uh, we'll be adding these to um, the Wine Snob long term review. So stay tuned. Uh, several years from now, we're going to revisit this same one, the same vintage, and uh, see how it's coming of age. Until then, cheers, Wine Snobs, and uh, enjoy the sunset. Once opened, some of those massive tannins become caramelized, giving a slightly sweet tinge over a fine-grained dusty grit. There is also the faintest of honey way in the back. You'd almost miss it. I recommend enjoying this wine over several days, especially at this relatively young age. I corked half my bottle with a vacuum stop and placed it in the fridge. On the second day, the body had taken a slightly smoother tone. The finish was even more massive with powerful, dry, warm, spicy grip. Notes of licorice were even more pronounced way past the finish. This is an age-worthy wine built for the long haul. It is barely approachable to the average palate right now. Being a small batch production wine, I recommend picking up at least a few bottles so you can follow its progression over the coming years. I anticipate it will reach its fullest expression at the 10 to 15 year mark, possibly longer. If you like big reds, the Black Beast is for you, especially if you like them fairly dry and terroir driven. Have you tried the Black Beast? Do you have a favorite big red or vineyard you'd like to see on Wine Snob? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to say a special thank you to Najar Vineyards for hosting me. Links in the description below on how to get in touch with them.